Thank you so much for joining today on our Side by Side journey as we try to help find some songs for Thomas. Songs for Thomas in our own heart, I think, if, if that's maybe more the true thing. Because, truth be told, all of us have elements of doubt. There isn't any human being, any Christian alive, who can say with certainty, I know everything about everything. I know everything about my Lord and Master. I know everything about my heart. No, we're continuing to discover more things. Else the Bible would never encourage us to continue to grow, to work out. These are phrases that show there's something more. And so we are now sitting with Thomas this one week of waiting. We're told in verse 26 of John 20, that eight days later his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them. Yes, he's had several days of having to think and ponder and weigh up in his mind the events that he has been living through. And the particularly struggling event was that with regard to his friends who all tell him, we have seen Jesus. Of course, he wasn't there. And he says that unless I see in his hands the marks of the nails and place my finger into the marks of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. C.S. Lewis once said this, writing to his friend Arthur Greaves. He said, I think the trouble with me is lack of faith. I have no rational ground for going back on the arguments that convinced me of God's existence. But the irrational dead weight of my old sceptical habits and the spirit of this age and the cares of the day steal away all my lively feelings of the truth. And often when I pray, I wonder if I'm not posting letters to a non-existent address. Mind you, I don't think so. The whole of my reasonable mind is convinced, but I often feel so. Yes, feelings and thinking. Just because we don't feel peaceful or strong in our faith doesn't mean to say that we have any need to be anxious. Those who felt secure on the Titanic were certainly not any better. They were very insecure. The person who doesn't feel secure on all the other ships that night, they had every reason to be secure, for theirs didn't sink. Your feelings are very, very up and down, aren't they? So, Well, we know that's not what faith is. Faith is not a matter of feelings. But there are feelings that come and go. Undulation, as Lewis talked about. His theory of undulation, or the the way that we go up one day and down another day. That's life, he said, and we need to be aware of that. Doubt, you see, does exist not in the realm of unbelief. Unbelief is just a place of unbelief. Doubt exists in the realm of belief. As Alistair McGrath says, Doubt often means asking questions or voicing uncertainties from the standpoint of faith. Francis Bacon, from even further back, said, If a man begins with certainties, he will end in doubts. But if content to begin with doubts, he will end in certainties. And having decided to reach out in faith, we will discover many of the doubts will be resolved in time. Maybe not time as we know it here and now, but certainly in eternity they'll be resolved. As the Apostle Paul reminds us that now we look through a glass darkly, but then face to face. So if we can help Thomas sing his song, and if we can help ourselves to sing this song, even in those times when we must wait, in the eight-day periods of our lives, between having made our statement as it were, I really don't know, and wondering what will happen, How can we do it? Let's think, what has Thomas been asked to believe? He's been asked to believe in the resurrection, in a word. As we have said, he has had testimony of his closest fellow disciples, and he should be able to trust them, and maybe he does to a degree. He certainly doesn't dismiss the resurrection as nonsense. He holds out the possibility for he's saying, unless I touch I will not believe. He's not saying this could never happen. He's not saying this is all rubbish and nonsense. He says, no, no, I see where you are. I see and I hear the the, the hope and the confidence in your voice. I see the change in your behavior. When I left, you guys were like myself. 
overwhelmed with, with grief and fear. And that's gone. That's gone. How is he going to, how is he going to explain that? Now, Thomas doesn't have all the accumulated evidence that we have, the years of reflection, the writings, the, the, the various comments of others, the testimony of individuals thought through with decades to think about it. No, no, Thomas is caught up in the moment and the serious trauma of over these previous days. Can you just imagine what this week has been like for someone through this trauma and living through it with a doubtful disposition as he had? And then secondly, take also into account the human heart, which, unaltered by grace, just hates God. And the very thought of God doing something like this would just be repugnant to to a, a heart that is untouched by grace. And then, after our hearts have been changed, we still experience the fallowness of our hearts and the resistance to belief at many times. I'm sure you find in your own heart, if you're being honest, that there are times you just do not like what you read in the Bible and you don't want to believe it. That's our heart not willing to gladly submit to the gracious truths of God. And then thirdly, take also the limitations of Thomas and all of us, because only God knows all things completely. We know mostly what we know only partially, adequately enough to function and enjoy life but only partially. We have to put our trust in so many things. The things that, well, even without full disclosure, take for example, travel. We've already mentioned traveling by boat or by plane or many other means. We don't understand all of the, the dynamics and the scientific explanations for air travel and so forth, flotation and take medicine, even these vaccinations. You don't know when the needle goes into your arm what's going into your arm, do you? I have no idea. Now, I've read lots of things to try and understand that it's morally okay to do so, and I believe it is. But I don't know the background to it. Take marriage. When you step up to say, I do, at, th at that day when you place your trust and commitment in the words of this person beside you that they say they will also do, we don't know everything about that person. We're only beginning to get to know them. And so that's a part. And just because Thomas can't explain the new joy of his fellow disciples fully, it's still reason enough for him to keep open the door of possibility. And that's what he does. And you see, that allows you and I to sing, is when we keep open the door of possibility. Now, what is it God may be asking you to believe today? And this is more personal, isn't it? Perhaps you're wrestling with his goodness in a hard place. Maybe you find yourself having to keep on living when some difficult thing is going on in your life. Maybe it's because your prayers seem to be unanswered. Maybe you're experiencing some great lack in your life. Maybe some ill health in your life. Something just that's not easy to bear. And to keep on singing his praise when everything about your life makes you want to weep, this is not easy. But holding on to the possibility that God is good in this place and that God knows what he's doing enables you and I to keep singing. Thomas had no category for the resurrection. He's in totally new territory. But he has a few footholds. Foot his friends, their words of joy, his pre previous experience of Jesus, going back to the tomb of Lazarus and being there and the testimony of that moment to see him step forth alive after four days being dead. He's being asked to wait and trust. And he himself has set the standard, unless I see and touch. John Calvin said once that God accommodates himself to our weakness. He did this for Gideon when he put his fleece out to see if God, would, if God was really saying what he was saying. And God is doing things for you and I, even in the darkness of our experiences right now. And so this is helping Thomas to sing, to think of new ways to understand his limits and the glory of what he's been asked to believe, to help him to see that what he already believes is real 
and this will help him to go further in and further up, as C.S. Lewis once said. It'll help him to see that his doubts is just a believer struggling within his faith. And that's often what you and I are doing. That can help us also keep singing, keep singing. God is there and answers will come as we'll see tomorrow.